Hello, Pisces. Welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so happy to have you here. 888 today. Um, all right, let's look. Let's see. Spirit, what messages do you have for Pisces? What messages do you have for Pisces today? Please show me the messages that you have for Pisces. For Pisces. For Pisces. Wow. Pisces, <clears throat> if things are not going great for you in this moment, you just give it a minute. Because they're, you're moving toward victory. You're moving toward success. This is, I mean, I don't know how much clearer a message can be. <laughs> you know, it literally says action and victory. On the bottom of the deck, though, we are talking about a broken heart. So there may be something that's really disappointed you, really let you down, really caused your suffering. To me, this broken heart feels that it's mending, though. Um, you know, there is this tear here, but it, it feels like it's mending rather than breaking. Um, you, underneath the broken heart, you have this community. And we have been seeing in recent readings this energy of a soul tribe coming together. So... You know, it may have been broken by by one person or by a situation, but it feels like there are other things that are either starting to take your attention or starting to come together for you. You have this action and you have this victory. I actually just want to clarify these with the tarot. So wasn't planning on doing it this way, but you know, I always like to stay open to things. Um, so we're going to take a look at it. What is this action and what is this victory? Please, Spirit, for Pisces. Action for Pisces. Action for Pisces. Action for Pisces. Oh my gosh, Pisces. Okay. Okay. So you have the Five of Cups, the Knight of Wands, and the Ace of Wands. With the Queen of Swords on the bottom of the deck, you may have someone moving towards you. When I see a black and a white horse, I always think of the chariot, that masculine and feminine energy, that yin yang, that balance between action and reception. Um, it, you may have someone coming in. This may be, <clears throat> you know, huh. for some of you, you have the Five of Cups and you have this broken heart sitting here. So you may have been focused a little bit on something that wasn't working or something that hadn't worked out or something that had, you know, um, left you in a space of suffering, left you in a space of hurting, of aching. Um, but I do feel, I, I can't get past with that broken heart. I do feel like it's healing or that even to some degree has already healed. Um, I, and I think we're all just a little bit broken and sort of stay that way forever, right? Like even, cause healing isn't crossing a finish line. I say this all the time, healing is not linear, it's cyclical. So, you know, I'm not really sure you can get a lot more mended than that. Um, but you take it as it resonates, right? We're all in different spaces and time. Um, and with the Knight of Wands, this could either be you, this could be someone who was in and out of your life, who kept you really focused on the past, who kept you really focused on something that really wasn't working out for you, um, or wasn't maybe even in your best interest. This could also be where you made up your mind that you were not going to focus anymore on the past, or you were not going to focus on the things that weren't working out in your life, and you were going, you were bound and determined to go after the things that you desired with the Knight of Wands. <clears throat> so this could be your own energy, or this could be someone who is seeing an opportunity with you. They may be seeing you single. They may be seeing you, you know, um, I don't know, like. This sounds awful, but what's coming to my mind is prime for the picking. You know, like they they may see like, oh, here's my opportunity with Pisces. Um, it may even be someone that has kept a bit of an eye on you. Um, with the Queen of Swords on the bottom of the deck, I kind of feel like this is your energy, Pisces, where you're kind of, you're very discerning. 
You know, I don't want to say that you're super guarded or protective because I feel like you're willing to talk. I feel like you're willing to hear somebody out or you're willing to get to know someone or if this is a past person who's been in and out coming back in, I do feel like you're, 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 I, I want to say you're cautious or you're a bit guarded, but you're also like willing to talk. Um, I, I feel like you're not in a space where you're going to really spare someone's feelings or where you're really going to, you know, I don't know, um, what I'm getting is be fake nice, okay, take it as it resonates, but with the Ace of Wands, I feel like Pisces, you know, or you intuitively feel or know that there is some opportunity that you do desire, or there is something that you desire, and you're wondering if this is that opportunity, or, you know, like, if this is a match to what it is that you want, um, but with the queen of swords, you're, you're, you, you know, you have learned hard lessons in regards to whatever this is, and you're not, you're not just going to throw yourself to a pack of wolves right now. You know what I mean? It's like someone has to prove that they are a viable opportunity or that they are offering you, um, something that has the potential to be what it is you're desiring. Um, you're being very smart about it. You're hanging back. You're not just diving all in. <clears throat> For some of you, it's like you've decided to pursue what you desire and you're moving in that direction. And with this Ace of Wands, it's showing you that in making this choice to go after what you want, you're you're coming across the, some other opportunities that you also desire that you that are just sort of like a side effect you know when we put where we put our focus that's what we're calling into our lives so when we all of our focus is on going after what we desire more of what we desire is going to come into our life so sometimes maybe you're going after a career path or something that you really do deeply desire and then all of a sudden you have an opportunity at love. And then all of a sudden you have an opportunity to live in a space that you always wanted to live in or to buy a car that you've always wanted to have or, um, or I don't know, be a part of a community or have um, a soul tribe of friends or, you know, it's like things are really changing here. Opportunities are really coming in. I am also getting the energy of passing a baton um, like maybe someone is passing something on to you. Maybe you have even like some inheritance or like someone is passing knowledge on to you or <clears throat> with the queen of swords, it could be some kind of knowledge, education, learning, learning a skill that you desire, but it can also be like. It's almost like your opportunity or your chance to lead something or your opportunity or chance like someone has taught you something or someone has molded you, shaped you, mentored you, something like that. And they're passing this thing on to you. And it's like you've done all this work or you've studied all of this stuff in order to be able to take this up when the time came and it may be coming and it may be coming even faster than you thought. <clears throat> There's no time to worry about this past stuff here. I could just feel that. What is this victory for Pisces? What is the victory for Pisces? Yeah, there is some energy around your work here, Pisces. You're getting the Seven of Pentacles, the Three of Pentacles, the Fool card, and the High Priestess. Yeah, like, this is all about listening to your intuition. I do feel like you, with the Fool card and the Knight of Wands, I feel like you have at least one person, if not more than one person, coming towards you who would like to collaborate with you on some level. Um, sometimes the Three of Pentacles can be friendship. Sometimes the Three of Pentacles can be work related, a project. And sometimes the Three of Pentacles can be like, get to let's seriously get to know each other so that we can build a firm foundation for whatever may come after this. With the High Priestess coming out, this is very much like 
you're listening to your own intuition and you are really allowing yourself to be guided. You're not really being swayed by the things that are happening outside of yourself. You're really focused on what you are creating, what you are working toward. Um, you're not getting distracted by drama or other situations. You see how in this card there's like these stars and there's like all this stuff sw swirling around her. It just feels like none of that really matters. Like it feels like this high priestess is really has a focus really on what she's working toward. With the three of pentacles, this may be an opportunity to, to find someone who does share your vision and who, who does want to make plans and who really does want to work hard to collaborate with you. This may be also where you may have an opportunity to go out on a limb with work. Um, there may be people that you work with that are starting their own company or something and you have an opportunity to go with them or um, you may have uh, an opportunity. It's like to kind of maybe it has something to do with what you were doing, but it may be something slightly different. Um, there's a, this is like listen to your intuition because this is a real opportunity for success for you here, Pisces. Uh, All I can say is like, what the feeling I keep getting is what a reading, what a reading. Like, it, it just feels like there's this momentum that is gathering and like, there are just, it feels as though you're coming into a space where there are going to be opportunities sort of left and right. Um, the vision that I'm getting is like when you're riding horseback and it's like, boom, boom, like, you know, just reaching out and grabbing things. It's crazy, but it feels it feels like there's a lot of energy picking up or there's a lot of momentum or a lot of movement picking up here. And all of it seems to be really leading you in a positive direction. And it all leads, it all seems to be going away from, you see how the horses are going this way, her face is going this way from this broken heart feeling. With this seven of pentacles, there's something about divine timing here. For a lot of you, these may be seeds that you planted that haven't come to fruition. Um, for some of you, this may even be like relationships that never experienced their full potential that are coming into play that you could, you know, pursue. For others of you, this can be something that you've been working on that, you know, is coming to like a project that you've been working on that is, you know, coming to a place where it's actually tangible or where it's actually like come to fruition where you're ready, where it's right. It's coming to the energy of completion successfully. All right, Pisces, on the bottom of the deck, you have detachment, you have self-love, and you have harmony. Wow, detachment was an energy that came up yesterday in your reading. Um, we talked a little bit about suffering and how, you know, attachment and allowing ourselves to get attached to outcomes or get attached to anything is the root of our suffering because things change, you know, um, and attachment is something that typically leads to our suffering. All right, on the bottom of the deck, this detachment says, you are releasing old patterns and ideas that no longer serve your highest ideals of love. Um, you know, so broken hearts always suck. You know, there it's it always, it always, it always hurts, you know, to have a broken heart. You can't have your heart broken without feeling something. And, um, but at, at the same time, a lot of times there is a lot of good that can actually come from it. The lessons that we learn, you know, easy for me to say, right, because I'm not suffering from a broken heart right now. Although I did just lose my mother-in-law and that was pretty heartbreaking. Um, you know, but we all have suffered from broken hearts, but, but, but we all do recover, you know, and, and maybe we are not the exact same person we were before we had our heart broken, but we're there is a whole big part of us that cannot be seen or touched, that cannot be affected by these, uh, it almost feels like trivial things of human existence. You know, our soul is so much bigger than that. It extends so far beyond 
this experience that we're having that, you know, sometimes it's like a matter of keeping it in perspective and also reminding ourselves day after day, moment after moment, hour after hour, this ain't your first rodeo. It's not the first time your heart's been broken. It's not the first time you've experienced suffering. And every single time you found your way through, every time you survived, every time you made it. And, you know, some, some heartbreaks are much worse than others. That is true. And, you know, maybe this is a hard one. Maybe this is a tough one. But it's so worth it to figure out where the gift is in it, figure out where the light is in it, figure out what we can learn from it and how we can grow from it and how we can move beyond it. Um, because every time we suffer and we learn and we gain some level of enlightenment, we're, we're more powerful to face what comes next. We're more... Suited for success, really, is how it feels. Take it as it resonates, guys. Um, you have self-love. You realize that love of self is necessary to love another. This is a tough one for us all to really learn. I, ha I feel like it. And it feels like one that should be so basic. One that should be so fundamental. But, you know, we're born and I feel like we're born in a state of self-love and peace and harmony with all that is. And, you know, in, almost immediately, life starts dealing us blows. Life starts giving us hard things to deal with. Um, you know, we get bullied at the schoolyard. We get, you know, uh, we have a parent that abandons us. We have a parent that's ill-suited for for child rearing. We have a parent that resents us. We have a narcissistic parent. We have, you know, who knows, but we, we have things almost from the very beginning of life that cause us to question our own worthiness of love or cause us to sort of surrender that, you know, I, I, I read, um, I, I know Einstein has a quote like this. There's, there's a lot of people who have quotes like this. Rumi's got a quote like this. But it is so much more about finding the things that we have pulled into our life to protect ourselves from pain and from suffering, identifying them and releasing them so that we can get back to our true nature, which is self-love, which is self-peace, which is self-soothing, which is connectedness with all that is. Um, it's all those barriers and those pieces of protection and armor and shields and, you know, oh, I, I, you know, could go on and on, you know, protecting us from our insecurities, protecting us from, you know, the hurtful things that a parent said that made us question ourselves and made us feel unloved or unworthy or, you know, the things that the kids on the playground said or the way we were treated or, you know, maybe we're the scapegoat in our family. Maybe we were... All of those things take us away from self-love and make us, they take us to a place almost without us even knowing it that makes us kind of not love ourselves. And then we try to love another person from that space and that person is trying to love us from that space. And then it doesn't work and we wonder why doesn't it work? It doesn't work because we got to love ourselves first. And there comes a place in our brokenness. And a lot of times it's kind of when you hit rock bottom, right? Where the real truth, those cataclysmic moments of clarity really happen. The tower with the lightning bolt. Where we go, oh, okay. Until I truly care and love for myself and respect myself and put myself first and protect that energy with boundaries rather than with defensive, you know, talk or actions or self-sabotaging things, you know, to protect myself from what I actually want to let in. Um, until I get to a place where I love myself so much that I trust myself with myself and that I'm, I'm, what I'm putting out there, I'm putting out there robed in boundaries like this is how close you can come to me until you earn your way closer to me until you earn your way again closer to me until you earn your way again closer to me do you know what i'm saying 
And when we have those firm boundaries, those safe, healthy boundaries in place, and we're not letting people get closer to us than they deserve to get, you know, we're not falling in love with the dream or the desire or the, the, just the desire not to be alone or we're not, you know, um, trying to take on a relationship with someone else before we have cemented the one with ourselves. Then, you know, we can be in a healthy relationship. So it may be something that has come out through some kind of heartbreak or something that it's like it, it feels discovered out of necessity. But once we find that energy of self-love, once we find that space where, you know, we can say, you you know, I am worth it. I am deserving of love. I am love. I am the frequency of love. I am grateful for exactly who I am. I am grateful for this about myself. I am grateful for that about myself. I am grateful for, you know, that I am like this. We are all completely unique individuals with very, very different you know, traits and very different skills and very different talents and very different everything. And we all have a little bit of all of it, right? And so when we can sit down with ourselves and say, man, you know, God, the divine, whomever we pray to, whomever we thank for this life that we're living, thank you for making me like this. Thank you for making me smart. Thank you for making me strong. Thank you for making me tall. Thank you for making me short. Thank you for making me loving and empathetic and compassionate and intuitive. Thank you for making me creative. Thank you for making me, you know, enthusiastic. Thank you for making me someone who actually cares about other people. Thank you for making me, you know, this or that. Thank you for bringing me safely to this space in my life where I can thrive, where I have the opportunity to make that decision for myself. And then when we're in that energy, we are in harmony with all that is. We are in harmony with life itself. You know, um, I, I, I always look to my dog or I look to nature or whatever to take my cues or to, to really, you know, I don't know, learn about life. I just feel like it's all there for us to see and to learn and to grow from just by observing in nature. And, um, you know, I look at my dog. My dog is always happy to be alive. My dog is always happy for his existence. My dog, you know, he's always like, yeah, I want to do what you're talking about. Yeah, I want to, you know. Um, and, you know, he's always like excited about his dinner. He's always, you know, like it, it's the same routine day after day. It's the simplest stuff. He knows exactly what he's getting. He knows exactly what to expect. I mean, some days are better than others, I guess. Um, but you know, he's excited about it. He's happy about it. He's passionate about it. And, um, you know, in nature, it's like, you see the same thing there, you know, the bird, the, I have cranes that wander through my yard every day. They're always completely present in the moment. And yeah, they have, you know, they have their ears open for any sign of danger or whatever. But for the most part, they're just completely relaxed, looking for food, feeding their young, living their lives. And, you know, I, I feel like when we get to a place with ourselves where we can be relaxed with ourselves, where we can say, you know, I am who I am and I like who I am and I'm doing the best I can and I know that I'm given this life and this opportunity being me in this moment, everything that I have, you know, and I'm trying to stay present in the moment and I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to be here and I'm excited. And sometimes that's really hard to say. Sometimes we're going through difficult times. Sometimes, you know, it is a little scary. I mean, um, that hurricane that came through Florida, you know, I live in Florida, my daughter was coming home and it was either like, come home before the hurricane gets ashore, but it's already in Florida, like the armbands are already in Florida, or you're gonna have to wait a week. And, you know, so she came home and, you know, has grown up in Florida and has been through many hurricanes, although I don't recommend ever driving through a hurricane, but I was terrified, you know, of course I was. Um, but at the same time, it's like my husband said, she has a great head on her shoulders, you know, da, 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 da. I mean, there's always risk involved in road tripping or, you know, whatever. But the thing is, it's like, there are always going to be things out there to, you know, make you scared or to um, cause you worry or cause you concern. But the best you can do to just sort of release them 
to let them go and to say, you know what, it will take care of itself. It always has, it always will. I'm going to make it through. I know that I'm worthy of it. I know that I deserve it. I know that, you know, I'm focused on the skills that I have, on the talents that I have. I'm focused on, you know, the things that I know I do well, the things that I'm grateful to be. Um, then those things are going to shine and those things are going to bring you to that place where that's what other people see when they look at you too. Um, so with this detachment here, it's almost like it's giving me this freedom from worry or this, you know, letting go of outcomes, you know, not needing things to work out a particular way and just really focusing all that energy about worrying or trying to control things outside ourselves on ourselves and just loving ourselves and you know, it is a really good um, exercise to sit in front of a mirror and really look at yourself and tell yourself, like, I love you. It can be very, very hard. It can be very triggering. Um, and then to even name the things that you really, really love about yourself. You know, and, and sometimes those things that we love the most about yourself ourselves are the things that have caused us the most pain. You know, um, I am a fierce lover. I'm a Libra, <laughs> you know, I am a fierce lover and I have paid mightily for loving people so fiercely in my life. Um, but I still wouldn't trade it for anything. I still thank God for my capacity to do that. And, you know, those are things that, you know, we face with ourselves. And the more we do that, the more we distance ourselves from those narratives and those stories of kind of being a victim or this happened to me or you know even the criticisms that other people have told us or that people have lumped onto us throughout our lives of you're too sensitive or you're too this or you're too that you know when you can really look at yourself and genuinely honestly be thankful you know for who you are and love yourself it doesn't matter what someone else's judgment is of you because you're like, I, I don't care what you're saying about me. I don't want to be you. I want to be me. I like who I am. Who I, There's not a problem with who I am with me. So you trying to convince me that there's a problem with me is futile. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to bear any weight. It's not going to happen. And then what happens is people who are trying to project their own insecurities and their own issues onto you, it just bounces off of you and right back onto them. You might take a momentary glance at it just out of old habit, but immediately it's like you look at where it's coming from and you go, yeah, no, I wouldn't trade being me for being you. Um, and sometimes it can even go to the space of like, you know, I see the value of you as a person, but like, I don't have a lot of respect for you and your views and the way that you're doing things or what you're spewing toward me. So your opinion of me holds no weight with me, you know? Um, and, and it's, you know, um, a lot of famous people, you know, are like people that I've studied have their own way of saying this also, but it's kind of one of those things where, you know, if you feel that someone is coming to you from a space of love and telling you something out of love and you have a lot of respect for who they are and maybe even you are trying to emulate them because you think they're a good person, then you can take that under consideration. But if someone is, is judging you and they're coming from a wounded place and what their, their judgment is really carrying is this projection of their own insecurity onto you, just deflect it. I, you, there, you can even literally in your mind say, like, return to sender. Like, I'm not willing to hold that weight for you. I return that to you. That is your weight to carry, take it. I say that all the time when, when people are projecting onto me, like people in the grocery store will do this to you. You know, um, I will just say return to sender. <clears throat> so anyway, I don't know if that helps, but whatever, that's what I'm getting from this detachment card. And you know, with this self-love and harmony, it feels like Pisces, you're finding this space of self-love, or it may be that you have already found it, but you're digging deeper into it, or it's starting to really integrate with you, or you're starting to really see the way loving yourself affects your life. 
Um, and you're coming into harmony, possibly with a soul tribe, possibly with a companion, like a soulmate or another person. But this is something that has been taking root over time. It's something that has been being worked on over time. And now it's like you're in a space where you're really trusting your intuition to lead you toward the victory that is meant for you at this time. Um, so let me go ahead and get some cards here. All right, you have via phone and this turned over in the deck and stayed in the deck. It is the only one and it is a number three. So let's see. Okay, you have try again. Yes, you guys, for some of you, you definitely have someone from your past. Um, this, this, you know, with this situation with the King of Wands and the Ace of Wands that we saw clarifying this movement, um, I feel like this is someone where, it, like, it could be, you may have actually dated this person or you may have a romantic history with this person, but it could also be someone that you don't, that it's like maybe you saw the potential of something developing, but then it never did. Um, with the King of Wands, it can be sort of like it was starting to happen, but then they got distracted by something else or they got enamored with something else and went a different direction or you did. Um, or maybe you were both pursuing your passions and went in different directions, whatever the case may be. But with the Five of Cups and the King of Wands and the Ace of Wands, this definitely could be someone from your past. Um, and it also says returning to you. Um, but it, you have via phone. Um, yeah, with the movement that is really giving me chariot vibes, there may be travel involved here. Um, and with via phone, it, like this could be someone that lives right down the street. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be at a distance, but it just feels like, um, they're not going to run into you or, you know, like there has to be some effort made in order to make this happen. Um, you know, we do a lot of things via our phone, right? We email, we Snapchat, we Instagram, we Facebook, we, I don't even know, we text, we call. Um, so it, there's somebody here, I feel like, and we are in Mercury retrograde who may want to try again, who may be returning to you. Um, you have this positive energy and this throwing shade, which makes me feel either this is someone that they are a different person when they are with you than when they are with other people. Like they may be a little bit low vibe or they may typically find themselves with crowds of people who... I sort of feel like Pisces you wouldn't really hang out with. Like, I feel like these are people who get together and talk about other people. I feel like Pisces are more the type of people who get together and talk about like big ideas and like music and books and movies. And you know what I mean? Like they have a lot more to talk about than other people. I don't talk about other people with my Pisces people. Um, and so it almost feels like there's a dichotomy here or like, um, it's got two sides to it. It's like, <clears throat> but it feels like something that you know. Um, with this eight being the positive energy, it's reminding me of the eight of wands and it sort of feels like when they're talking to you, they're like a positive person or they're positive energy or they're really focused on having success and victory. But with the six, with the throwing shade, it's like their their actual ener energy may, may be more in alignment with something a little more low vibe. I don't know. Um, or it may have been historically with a six that can be talking about the past. Then you have honesty and results coming. So it feels like there is some kind of like almost like confession type energy here or it's like maybe I should have told you this a long time ago. Or, um, you know, because the 16 is a seven spiritual lesson kind of energy with the honesty, it's like, it could be that, you know, this person really needed to learn some kind of lesson and maybe they have and they're coming in to tell you or to like finally possibly be accountable for something. I don't want you to get your hopes up here because I feel skeptical about it, especially with the think it through on the bottom of the deck. It's a 14 and a five. So it's making me feel like this change came through obstacle, like this person learned the hard way possibly or they are learning the hard way because you also have results coming, which is a five. It's just, it's giving me like, you're going to know something soon. Like you're going to, um, some of you are going to have someone reaching out to you via the phone, however that is, um, that 
possibly they want to give it another try and and with their two sevens and two fives it's like there's been a spiritual lesson learned here um but they may have taught you the spiritual lesson you know um with the think it through and the high priestess cure um with the success and the victory card it's just telling me listen to your intuition just listen to your intuition um, I feel like you've worked hard to get into this energetic space that you're in. This could have even been someone that made you question yourself or your own worth or your own value. Someone that may have projected onto you in the past and you may be ready to like really leave that behind. And it may have been a really hard place for you to finally get to. And then they're coming back around and it's like, just be careful, Pisces. All right, so let's get some tarot on this. So what is this about? Can you please tell us, Spirit, what is this about? All right, this card wants us to look at it. The tower. See, there's been a lot of tower energy here. Okay. This person may be coming out of a tower. Oh, dang. Oh, Lord have mercy on my soul. Um, oh, this. Okay. Oh, man. Some of you may be dealing with some kind of avoidant. <laughs> I know. I, I feel like I just keep saying that over and over and over again. Um, but I, you know, it just, it keeps showing up. So you have the four of cups with the three of swords and the nine of swords. The four of cups is someone who, you know, I, I it feels as though, uh, the four of cups with the three of swords, it's like they may have some kind of wounding in their heart chakra surrounding rejection, um, or potentially neglect with the four of cups here. Um, you know, it can be where they have just been very disappointed in life over and over and over again, but the four of cups, bigger kind of meaning does really talk about rejection and neglect. I feel is part of that with the three of swords. This could be some kind of childhood wounding. They may have had a parent that abandoned them. They may have been emotionally neglected. Like there wasn't really a safe place for them to fall or for them to really express themselves or to matter. Could have even been a child of a narcissist. Um, cause with a narcissist, they don't want to hear about your feelings. Um, especially if they're the cause of the pain. So, um, with this four of cups and this three of swords, you know, it just, it feels like someone who may have also sort of come to some understanding that, you know, this wounding may have been something that was perpetuating um, them in a life that wasn't what they wanted. It was kind of more of the same, you know, it was kind of like letting their past dictate their present and their future. With the nine of swords, this can be where they, uh, are even aware of their own fear or um the way their fear affected them i'm going to clarify it you have the empress on the bottom of the deck so you do have these two threes uh and for me the empress may be that you were the one that got away or you are the one that um they wow three threes and then you have temperance here. I'm, I'm just going to ask. Okay. Um, okay. All right, so um, what I asked was, because you have three threes here, is there a third party situation? And um, it, it could be that there was a third party situation or that maybe there is a third party situation, but you, I clarified it asking that. I clarified the three of cups and the three of swords asking that, and you got the nine of pentacles with the full, and these are both single energies, and then you have the world on the bottom of the deck. So it could be where there was a third party involved or a third party was involved in whatever was bringing pain to the situation or suffering to the situation. Or it could even be that this is someone who had a hard time just committing to one person or, you know, because if that one per if they're really all in emotionally with the one person and then the one person 
you know, cuts them loose or rejects them, then they're really, really broken. Then that they have, they're left with nothing but this unhealed wound that's triggered. You know, if they have you and then they have someone else and then they, you know, you reject them, then they just run to the other person and blame you for what happened. You know what I'm saying? Um, but they're, they're not just left alone triggered with this wounding. So, um, but until they end this third party situation that all they're doing is projecting that suffering onto, onto the other people in the situation, right? Because, you know, it just feels like what's happening here. So with the full card and the nine of pentacles, it seems like this person does want to approach you and it may even be that they realize that they can't do that unless they are fully by themselves with the full card. Um, because if you're in the energy of the nine of pentacles, you're not listening to some fool. You're not entertaining some idea of someone coming to you and being like, yeah, I know I still have my other person or yeah, I'm still talking to my other person. Um, but you know, I'm totally into you and I want to take a leap of faith with you. You know, if you're in the nine of pentacles, you're like, um, okay, I'm busy right now. See ya. Um, so with the world card here, this is a completion of some kind of cycle. It may be where this person has, has, like, I feel like left these shenanigans behind or like, um, because it feels like, I don't want to just dismiss any other relationship here, but it, it just, it feels like something that I'm holding on to so that I don't get hurt or like, I don't know. It's like carrying a shield and it's like bringing the shield to the dinner table. Like you just don't need to do that. Like you're probably not going to get in a war at the dinner table. I don't, I just have no idea where these things come from you guys, but this is what I'm saying. It's like, you know, maybe I don't need that here. You know, maybe, maybe I can just show up. Maybe I can leave the past behind finally with the full card energy. I can leave the past behind and I can actually take a leap of faith towards you. If this person isn't able to do that, it's certainly where they're headed or it's certainly what they want to be able to do. I feel like um, with the world card, they have an opportunity to close the cycle, but it requires them, I believe, to make this decision to come forward and leave the past behind, to be like empty handed, to actually be free, to come towards you. With the six of pentacles clarifying the nine of swords, you know, this can be someone that breadcrumbed you out of fear or like, you know, someone who um, you know, gave you just enough to keep you holding on, but really never showed up and actually balanced out the scales here or gave you as much as you deserved or as much as you were giving to the situation. And that was out of fear. With the Ace of Rods and the Empress on the bottom of the deck and the World Card on the bottom of the deck, this is like, you know, someone finally saying, um, you know, this is what I want. I'm claiming this. I'm like saying this out loud. This is what I want. You know, with the Empress, it's like in, in their mind, they have come to a space where they feel comfortable and confident being like, you are the one, you know, you are the person that, um, is, a, I hold above all others that I see no one else in the same way all right we still have the fear we still have the wounding guys so we got to see what what's going on here deeper wow so you have the three of wands the seven of wands and the chariot so now it's like you have all these sevens again um You know, with the three of wands, this is like where we're really looking to our future and we're visualizing it and we're asking ourselves, what do we really want to be a part of the future? What do we really want our future to look like? And with the seven of wands, it's like, okay, I'm putting this, I'm, I'm not just, I'm not just visualizing it. I'm not just manifesting it. I'm going for it. I'm, I'm going to fight for it. And with the chariot on the bottom of the deck, it, it really it feels like it starts some kind of ball in motion here. It starts some movement here towards success.
This may not be a past person that's coming back around. This may be a new person and it may be that you are able to really recognize the value of this or, or, or whatever because of what you have experienced in the past. Okay. The seven of wands is being clarified by the nine of wands in reverse. And the seven of wands is being clarified by the seven of cups. So, okay, now we have like three sevens here. You guys keep having a lot of repeating numbers in your readings. And then you have the death card on the bottom of the deck. So this is either, this can be where we're letting go of an illusion, where we're letting go of something that never panned out in order to fight for the vision that we have for ourselves for our future like finally admitting that someone can't ever show up or isn't ever going to be the person that we need them to be and that you know we're we're willing to go for something new we're willing to push our fear and our suffering from that past situation aside to embrace something new we're allowing something to end and we're Putting our, we're getting ourselves in an energy where we're able to move towards success and victory and really yoke up with someone who's able to really yoke up with us. Um, and this can also be where you have a past person who is very defensive, very guarded because they were protecting this sensitivity, this vulnerability, this wound in their heart. Um, and they may be letting their guard down or they may realize that in order to have the vision that they want to hold for themselves in the future, they have to let down this guard because it's blocking them from having what they really truly want. With the seven of wands and the seven of cups, this is like fighting through the bullshit. It's like, you know, there. this can be where someone lets fear and illusion get in the way all the time and they're like, nope, no more. I'm fighting through the fear and illusion. I'm not letting that stop me. I'm not letting that get to me. This can also be where, you know, someone may think that you have options and they're fighting to be your champion or your number one choice here. Um, or they want this cycle to end where they feel like they are having to compete with other people or even possibly this can be the ghost of someone else, you know, where they feel like you're still hung up on a past person and they're like, let me get your attention. Let me show you why I'm the one that you want to choose here. Guys, I, you know, I got the feeling of the Six of Cups with the sh throwing shade card. And I literally, I just keep getting, it's this energy of, I, I feel like it's, you know, it's like someone who's forging a, almost like a real, true, genuine relationship with someone that it, it just feels real. But it feels like if it was exposed to this person's friend group or maybe it has been exposed to this person's friend group or their family or something, it can only be sort of expressed in a way in which it's being judged or criticized or, you know, shade being thrown at it. It's so weird. I don't even know what to say about it. But that's what I get. It's kind of like they're dismissing it behind your back or they're, you know what I mean? It's like when I'm with you, we're really doing something serious and we're doing something that um, it has positive energy, right? That is that, you know, it, it feels like I'm connecting with a soulmate and it feels so good. But then there's the situation external to the situation. And it's like when I come over here, I'm in a, to I'm a totally different person. I'm in a completely different energy. And with the page of cups on the bottom of the deck, it's like I have something to apologize for. I have something to be honest about. Um, it just literally feels like this is coming out again. Um, this may have been actually the cause of the ending. I don't know. Maybe you knew that. Maybe you didn't. Um, and maybe it is and maybe it isn't, right? I mean, you know, this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave the rest. But with the Page of Swords in reverse and the King of Swords in reverse, you know, this can be, you know, someone who feels like they can't speak their truth or like there's someone that is like actually more dominant 
um, whose opinion they have to like win favor from or, you know, someone who would not approve. The King of Swords in reverse is a pretty brutal energy. It's a pretty harsh. It's pretty critical. It's pretty much like the guillotine, you know, it's like, oh, if, if you're having this kind of relationship over here with this person, then uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's very harsh. Um, and so it's like this person may have even let this relationship come to some kind of end over the situation, or they may have really been disloyal to the situation because of this. And it almost feels like they felt they had no control. This may have been where somebody was actually outnumbered by people that were like this, you know, like a family um, situation or like a friend group situation. Um, and so it's like they didn't have the confidence to speak their truth with the Page of Swords. They were just like one small entity that didn't have a chance against this, you know, king energy, whether it was like a group of people or like one person. Um, and with the Page of Cups, it's like they're coming to apologize for it. But see, the thing that I lack that I'm not really seeing is, you know, you do have the death card, which can be a transformation, right? But like, I'm not seeing where it's like, I, I see this person maybe letting down their defenses or maybe like, you know, kind of being honest with you or like coming to you with some kind of truth. But like, if this is a past person, like if this is a new person, I don't have any beef with this person. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not, I'm not seeing like a bunch of red flags, but if this is a past person coming back, it's like what I'm not seeing is like the eight of pentacles the you know i'm not seeing the hermit energy i'm not seeing where they have like gone off and really thought about this and and have really allowed some kind of transformation to take place you know I, i'm not seeing where they have let this go so let's just keep looking sometimes in tarot it's about what you don't see that you just have to keep digging for yeah, it never got off the ground. It was what this person wanted. This person was happy. They felt they were healing. This felt really good to this person. Um, but but they it wasn't they weren't able, they felt like it wasn't in their control to take what they wanted here. And this is why I feel. What is this? Oh my. Oh gosh. See, for for some of you, this could have been um a disapproving mother. It could have been even a disapproving ex. Um, this person wants another chance. They want to do over at this decision with the judgment card and we're, um, on the bottom of the deck. Oh, it could have even been for some of you in this person's own mind, you know, with the King of Swords and the Page of Swords where their own mind gets the best of them and in their own mind, they're their cruelest you know, companion and with the, the queen of pentacles in reverse, it's like they actually maybe didn't feel worthy of love. They, maybe they didn't love themselves and they blew this up or they weren't able to really take advantage of it. For others of you, this is actual people or an actual person who, um, you know, the queen of pentacles in reverse can be a very dangerous energy, um, can definitely be narcissistic, but, um, you know, it's like, if I'm not going to be happy, I don't want you to be happy either, sort of energy, kind of. Um, or, you know, I, I don't want you to be better than me. I don't want you to have something that I don't have. It's almost like a jealousy thing or an envious thing, or it's almost like a you would look better than me if you had that, so I can't let you have that. It, it's a real yuck energy. Okay, so what, so has this person changed? Like, what's going on here, Spirit? If this is a returning person, have they done any changing? Two of Cups. Okay, okay. You have the Queen of Wands with the Seven of Pentacles and Temperance with the Two of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Um,
Okay. So the Queen of Wands is being clarified by the Eight of Cups in reverse and the Strength card. This may be that their desire for you never really waned. You know, sometimes it's like we may have thought, okay, it's easier for us to be a part of this situation with the Page of Swords and the King of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. You know, it, it's like, it's like especially if this is your family or if this is like a friend group or if this is like the bulk of your existence and you don't, you know, we never know if a relationship or romantic connection is actually really going to work out or not. So it may be that this person may have felt like this situation was too risky or, you know, that they needed for whatever reason to choose this group or this person over this connection. And they may have thought that they could just kind of walk away and be okay. But um, with the Eight of Cups in reverse, it's like they feel they have to come back around because they still desire it. Um, with the Strength card here, this is a very strong soulmate connection. And it's kind of like, you know, you're the only person that got me. You're the only person that made me feel this way. And there is like this energy of like, you know, a taming of the heart of, you know, um, you know, I can only get this from you, this energy, this feeling, this, this, it is a desire with the queen of wands. It is, you know, there is an element of physical chemistry or attraction there, but it is also like, um, kind of the energy of how you make someone feel in your presence, you know? Um, but it, it is kind of like, a, I don't really want anyone else in the same way and I can't stop wanting you. And that's why I'm coming back around. Um, with the seven of pentacles and the temperance energy, it, it may be like, I may have tried to plant other seeds or I may have tried to go in another direction, or I may have even said that time will heal all wounds or time will make me stop feeling this way or time will... Time will, you know, ease this desire or, you know, like fix it or make me immune from it or whatever the case may be. Um, but in this case, you know, you can even see on this Seven of Pentacles, you have the Seven of Pentacles and Seven of Pentacles. There's a lot of sevens here, spiritual lessons, energy. Um, it's kind of like time has only, you know, made me continue to focus on it or continue to desire it. Um, with the Hierophant and the Eight of Wands and the Two of Cups on the bottom of the deck and the Emperor on the bottom of the deck, you know, it may be with all of these sevens that this person really had to learn a spiritual lesson in order to be able to like communicate or be able to like, even, um, with the Eight of Wands, it can be even like, even to like engage reciprocally with you, like to even have to even take this conversation to a deeper level or to another place or towards success and victory even it's like i had to learn this i had to uh the hierophant is a spiritual gatekeeper so like it's like i had to rise above the vibration that i was in you know i had to get to a different place um the seeds had to have a chance to take root kind of um and then you have the two of cups on the bottom of the deck, but it's like, you know, it's almost like recognition that this is a soulmate connection or that there was a deeper purpose or a deeper, deeper reason for this relationship. And with the emperor, it may be so that I could finally take control of my own situation and stop worrying and listening and, and, and kind of allowing this to sort of keep me small, whatever this situation was to keep me small, whether it was them with them in their own head, with their own thoughts that were crippling them, whether it was them with another person or another group of people, a family, friends, something like that. Um, you know, this person had to find the cojones to take control of their own life and to be their own boss and to make the decisions for themselves. And this relationship, because of its strength and because this person could not stop desiring it, has put them in that place, has taken them there. All right, Pisces. Um, I'm going to get you some message cards. And we will close it out on this Lion's Gate 888.
All right, if you're dealing with a water sign, clear your energy field and focus on what on yourself before acting. Don't dismiss the red flags here. I feel so drawn to you. I compare others to you and I want you so badly. If you are dealing with a fire sign, I saved your texts and messages. I am recovering. I remember every detail of that day. I know I messed up everything. I don't know why this happened. The timing just wasn't right for us. We will be together again, and I want to make amends. If you are dealing with an earth sign, I need security. I wish we could go back. Go slow. Take time to get to know each other. I know you don't feel the same. An addiction is affecting this relationship. It can also be codependency. Um, trust it is safe for you to trust in this situation. If you're dealing with an air sign, I can't be with you. I see life differently now. I won't let you down. It's time for me to heal now. All right, Pisces, this is what I have for you. I really hope it helps. I hope it brings you some peace and some clarity. If it does, let me know. Like, share, subscribe, um, comment. I love to hear from you all. I don't always get a chance to respond to your comments, but they do really mean a lot to me and I do read them every day. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Until next time, guys, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.